don't really like um, plugging my guitar in for, for recording purposes. I like them to be mic'd up because it captures that um, acoustic resonance again. And there's a lot of um, frequency ranges that you can't pick up from, from you know, plugging the guitar in. It just doesn't sound, it sounds live, but it doesn't sound, you know, if I'm just sat here playing to you acoustically, it's not that sort of thing. That's what I wanted to capture. Excellent. You've got all this technology nowadays, um, and you can sort of overuse it, really. I think people get a little bit carried away. You know, a lot of producers get carried away from with, with different sounds and thinking, oh, I need to tweak that, I need to do this. But I think some of the best performances and the best albums, even a lot of the old country, country um, albums, um, didn't really have a lot of production on them. I mean, if you listen to a lot of the Louvin Brothers early stuff and, and um, Grand Parsons and the Flying Burrito Brothers, um, you know, Linda Ronstadt's um, Heart Like a Wheel album, that's, that's it's still got that rawness to it, you know, and, and she's got such a wonderful voice, it would have been a shame to, to, to um, affect it too much, you know, treat, too much treatment on it. Um, well, I did the demo. Um, that was when I was 17, 18, and I mean, to, for me, um, I was working towards a record deal at the time. I was young and naive, and um, somebody came along and tried to sweep me off my feet um, in that department. And, um, you know, look, I didn't take the offer, which I think was the, the best thing for me because. It's just a different accomplishment. Um, it was quite, quite. You know, it's, um, I was quite young, I was you know, 17, 18 and hadn't really experienced life and as I said before, the music for me has always been about the experiences I wanted to experience more to, to get my songwriting better and I think if I'd have took an offer at that age, you know, I probably wouldn't have ended up, um, music, it's musical, the musicality that I've got now and maybe sort of um, the range of listening, the music that I listen to. Um, I could have gone to America and sort of um, started off over there, but you know, I think a lot of younger artists now are more impressionable as well. So, I think if something comes along like that, they get quite um, it goes to their head straight away and they, they think for themselves, Oh my god, you know, which is you know, for me, it's probably everything that I've ever wanted to do anyway. And um, I, you know, I could have took the opportunity, but I think. I know, well I know I made the right decision because I was definitely too young and I wasn't immature but I hadn't had the life experiences that I've had now to sort of know um, the business in mind. And you, you yourself are in a particular scene or been on the outside of, of it all? I think I've always felt on the outside a bit. Um, I think a lot of singer-songwriters do because I think the bands do tend to take over. Uh, there's certain venues that my music doesn't always suit as well because it's more orientated towards the, the bands or you know the different styles that you change to. You sort of have to sort of um, shop around where you can sort of fit in. I think you know. it's nice to, to, to go out and listen to different sort of music and mix with different people because I'm influenced by so much um, so much music stylistically. It's it's nice to have influence from, from different styles as well. People tend to know a lot of other musicians around the Worcester area and that, but it's just it is just getting Worcester's people in general and you know, the younger generation as well as the older generation to sort of come out and support my music and and really get back behind it because since the X Factor's been out and, and different um, television programmes and things like that and because of the recession people don't want to go out so much so they tend to stay at home you know, drink at home, um, watch more television and it's just a shame because there's a lot of music out there that's not being heard because people don't come out and support it. So the whole thing performed at things like the Lawn Lounge? Yeah. What are your memories of that? Um, that was actually a very good night, I really, really enjoyed that and you know, there's a lot of people there from, from the community as well and um, there's a lot of people in general that came out to see me play and um, it was just a really, really good night, people having a good time and, and supporting a good cause as well. And it was it was like a breath of fresh air. It's just a shame that there's not more nights like that where you know people can just go for it. But I think again, that was a few years ago now, so Yeah, the Northland even 
was actually recession proof because you didn't even need anybody to go. You didn't no. even have, you brought, take your own drink if you wanted yeah. a drink. And that was uh, the nearest to a true hippie vibe that I've ever seen. Yeah, it was, especially with like the um, the Dali themes and and um, the one the Bollywood themes and um, you know, the different sort of themes that they carried on each week. It was lovely because it sort of made people want to. Um, try harder and, and just have fun as well. And it was it was quite laid back and you know there was no pressure, but it was nice because people actually wanted to support things like that and, and get out and do it. Then we've got things like the Worcester Music Festival. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant, brilliant concept. You know, it gets more people involved in, in performing and that. And you know, nearly all the, the venues in Worcester, the pubs in Worcester, and some cafes and bookstores, you know, they all want to hold music as well, which I think is wonderful. And it's showing people, um, tourists that come to Worcester and you know, people of Worcester in general, that there's there are people worth coming out to see and, and that. And I mean, we're giving quite a lot of our time to, to um, these events as well, you know. Some days we'll be, you know, four day periods of, we'll be playing maybe over the whole of the weekend and we play at different venues, sometimes one after each other. and. It's, it's quite um, an intense few days, but it's very enjoyable and you get to mix with people as well that you like and friends can come and see you play and it's just celebrating, you know, Worcester's culture and the beauty of Worcester and, and you know, it's history and everything really, so. Do you reach the general public again or is it? I think it does because there tends to be quite a lot of um, promotion for it on the websites um, and, and in the news and on the radio. Um, I know quite a few people travel from afar as well to come and see us, um, which I think, is, again, is wonderful. You know, taking our time as well, so it's nice to, to give something back, but I think, on the other hand, it's, it's again promoting that sort of playing for free as well, which, if you want to make it as a serious musician, um, you can't always play for free, you know, because then it's, you find it difficult to get those, the, the, the gigs where you're getting paid more. And, you're right, because sometimes even I thought somebody's playing at the Mars Bar and it's a pilot to get in. Yeah. I could see that they're playing for free somewhere yeah. else, so why would I pay a five? Why would you pay a five? Yeah, but that's the, you know, that's the, the thing, isn't it? Um, I mean, if, if people see that you're playing somewhere and playing for free there, and then you've got a gig somewhere else and you're playing for you know five pound a ticket, and that, people tend to go for the free one, don't they? And then, you know, not so many people go to the one might have to pay and then you might not go, get booked there again. But you could have packed the other venue out, you know. So it's kind of it's kind of um, a bit hit and miss in that sort of scenario. But it's quite a dilemma and also if you, you are playing three or four times over that weekend there's a danger of being overexposed. Well yeah, there is to an extent, but you know, it's kind of sort of um, getting the vibe going as well, isn't it, with um, the the other musicians and that and can join other people on stage, you know, you tend to sort of, it's, it's, it's laid back so you can um, do what you like and there's a lot of different bands that sort of merge with other bands, you know, to perform different songs and they might invite somebody up to sing with them or something, so it's kind of like you don't always see things that you would if you went to actual gigs, you know, it's a bit more, um, what's the word, serendipitous I suppose, you know, um, there's a little, like a few hidden gems that sort of um, come out of the woodwork on those few days.